Thank you. Please bow your heads and pray with me. As Rotarians, we are taught to live the full way test in all things we think, say, and do. We pray for the continued spirit of service that brought each of us into Rotary. We pray for the grace of God. God, we are thankful to you for this wonderful day and its blessings and its opportunities and ask that you provide us all with strength and courage to face our challenges. We ask that you provide us with the will and the ability to always give our very best and we ask that you provide guidance to us in every day in making our decisions. We ask that you bestow your blessings upon our families, our communities, our countries, and our leaders. We ask that you look favorably upon Rotary, its members and leaders, and especially upon our speaker and these Rotarians and guests gathered here today. Give us, guide us in our continued efforts to reduce suffering and, suffering and help us to improve the quality of life of those less fortunate. Bless this food and the hands that prepared it to the nourishment of our bodies and us to thy service. Lord, bless us and bind us, put our sins behind us, and hide us where the devil can't find us. Amen. <laughs> scholarship winners, Catherine Marion. Catherine is a former student at Ben Lippin and is now a nursing student at University of South Carolina. Please welcome Catherine Marion. Now it looks like here for today. Thank you to all our guests for being here and everybody remember to please bring guests next week. I look forward to seeing them. Thank you. Of South Carolina, and uh, the book is out. 
you might have seen it in the Star and Reporter, and the Star had an article about it. Um, it will go on sale Wednesday at the fair, and I'll be there all the time the fair is happening, um, signing books. But I thought I'd tell you a few of the things I found interesting um, in doing the book. I found many interesting, but I'll share a few of them with you today. How many of you remember Big Thursday? For those of you who don't know what Big Thursday was, that was Thursday during Fair Week, where from 1909 to 1959, Carolina and Clemson played their annual football games. What you don't know, and what I think probably nobody knows until I found it in the papers, was Big Thursday was basically named in the 1890s. Because that's when the state ball took place, that's when the premiums were awarded, that was the most active day of the fair. So the term Big Thursday was actually um, used well before the 1909 continued progress of the thing. And I tell my Clemson friends, like Rusty, you know, it took Clemson that long to figure out they were playing the way game. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the fair originated when the first fair from the State Agricultural Mechanical Society was uh, put on. It was put on on Elmwood Avenue, where the two schools are up there on Elmwood. They moved to the current fairgrounds in 1904. Um, when they were up on Elmwood Avenue, there really was not enough room on the fairgrounds for the entire fair. So from 1870 until 1915, most of the midway activities, including the merry-go-round and anything like that, were on Main Street, all up and down Main Street. And I have descriptions of Main Street with thousands of globes of light lighting it. So the fair closed at 6, and everything moved to Main Street until 1915. Much to the unhappiness of the retailers along the street who no longer had the opportunity for people walking up and down at that point in time. Little known fact, Rosewood Drive, where we are now, was built in the 1930s to bring traffic from the Sumter area into the fairgrounds without having to go through downtown. It's been much widened from what it was then. It was a two-lane road that came in to the fairgrounds. How many remember the Palmetto Trials? I don't remember them because they happened and stopped one year before. 1950 till 1969, the Junior League sponsored the Palmetto Trials. There were horses stabled at the fairgrounds from the northern tracks from the 1890s until 1970. Um, it was a very important track. It had a great soil, which allowed the horses to be able to run without having to do any damage to their hooves. We had three or four hundred horses stored here every year, and from 1950 to 69, the of trials were there, um, as well as sponsored by the junior. <clears throat> and finally, um, anybody remember in the early 1960s, they tried to build a convention center on the fairgrounds? The fairgrounds actually gave their property to the city and the county. They were going to build a convention center, a performing arts center, and a coliseum for the football, for the basketball team to play. It got involved in referendums and politics. It was voted down twice, and finally in 1965, it reverted um, back to the fair itself. And I'll close with sort of the final question I always get, particularly from the guys when, I, when they ask me about the fair book. Is they say, is there a section on the Hoochie Coochie shows? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm just going to be quick today. I have a few announcements. We've got a packed meeting. So um, just to, want to remind you of some important dates upcoming. October 24th is World Polio Day at Sacred Park. 11 to 2, big celebrations, so details to follow us, especially next week. Um, and it started mid November. Our Salvation Army bell ring will start, will take place. So we've got dynamic leaders, so um, stay tuned. We'll give you more details later. December 7, 8.30 to 11.30, here at Sea our food packaging day to benefit the needy children and families in our Richland School District 1 area. The sign-up sheets are either on your tables or outside, so come join us. We'll have the USC Rotaract team helping us also, and it was lots of fun and fellowship last year. I know it will be the same this year, and for a great cause. December 16th, 
our Columbia Rotary Club Social will be held at the Governor's Mansion Complex, starting at the Lace House. More details to follow. You don't want to miss this event. Um, and remember, last year, we had the canine patrol from SLED, that unit, um, speak to us, Officer Jamie Owens, and several of you flooded him after the meeting to see the dogs and to ask if he had ever had any of them. And he just emailed me this weekend and said they have four four-month-old bloodhound puppies that are ready. If you're interested, I've got the contact information just to let him know. I don't think they'll last long, so um, see me after the meeting. Um, the membership survey, Glenn told me today, and I've already seen it, went out online. I hope that you all will complete it and send it back at your earliest convenience so we can make sure our, our club is in good shape and do what we need to do to get even better. And now, Catherine Mason. Marion, excuse me, but I said that. Catherine Marion, our scholar from last year, uh, was it April, was chosen, wants to come and say a few words with us. Good afternoon. My name is Catherine Marion, and I was on the scholarship recipients from last year. Um, I'm a freshman at the University of South Carolina majoring in nursing, and I would eventually like to work in labor and delivery. I graduated from Midlifton High School, and I went there K through 12th grade. Um, this scholarship has been very important for me. I'm actually getting paid to go to USC because of y'all's generosity, and I've um, been really thankful for that because that's helped me pay for my books and my parking pass, all the other things that you need just so that college can be as simple as possible since it's already a large transition time. So just for me and the other recipients, we wanted to thank y'all for your generosity towards us. And I'm excited to come back and visit y'all more often. Thank you. We are so proud of you. Thank you for sharing time with us today. And keep us posted. And now, to introduce our speaker, is our assistant governor, Eric Davis, who really needs no introduction. He's a former member of this club. We keep trying to get him to come back. But now we'll introduce our speaker. It's great to see you all again. It's great to be back. Before I introduce Johnny, uh, Louisa gave me permission to do a very short advertisement for the uh, Purple Pinky fundraiser that the St. Peter's Early Act Club is having today. Uh, Early Act, as you probably know, is the uh, elementary school version of Rotary. We have our first Early Act Club in Area 2 uh, at St. Peter's, just up the road. So if you'd like to come by between the hours of 2.30 and 4.30 today, donate a dollar and get your pinky purple, uh, we'd love to see you. If you can't make it, if you'd like to give me a donation, then I will see that it gets over there today. And if by chance you don't have a dollar in your wallet, I want you to know that St. Peter's Early Act is strictly non-denominational. We will accept any denomination that you have in your wallet. <laughs> Our district governor, Johnny Moore, grew up in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and graduated from the wrong university in 1975 with a BS in industrial management. Go Tigers. <laughs> He founded uh, South Med, which later became Signal Technologies. He founded that in 1992 and managed its growth to become a leader in communications and security systems, sales and service. He retired from Signal Technologies in April 2018, uh, and he sold the company in December of 2018. He is married to Susan Moore, sitting right here next to him. And he says they're still newlyweds after 43 years of marriage. Now, I didn't believe that, so uh, I had Susan independently verify that. And she said, yes, they, they are still newlyweds. They have three married daughters, three sons-in-law, and ten grandchildren ages 11 and under. That's a lot to, to run after. He's a member, member of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, where, among other things, he's in the drama ministry, 
Someday I'm going to get out of him a lot more about that adventure. He has a rotary, uh, 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 rotary, uh, a list of rotary accomplishments longer than my arm, so I won't go through all those. But I did want to highlight his participation in the foundation. He's got four Paul Harris fellows. He's a sustaining member. He's a Bequest Society member, uh, and uh, uh, he is also a member of the Rotary Action Group against human trafficking. He enjoys, uh, among other hobbies, woodworking, and I asked him to bring some samples today, but he said they're too large, so I guess you're going to have to go out to his house to see his woodworking prowess. So with that, I'd like to introduce our esteemed district governor, Johnny Moore. coming out here with me because, uh, and I've already explained to Louise, I'm probably going to have my back for a good bit. I don't do podium real well. Uh, I like to get out and, uh, and walk around a bit while I'm talking because it kind of it kind of helps me uh, make eye contact with a few more of you so that you can't go to sleep while I'm up here. That kind of helps. So thank you all so much for the warm welcome. It's been great being here with you today. Uh, Louisa, thank you. And Eric, thank you for that introduction. I, I want to start out by asking you a couple of questions. First question is this. I want to just think back on your life for a minute. How many of you started at, at a young age to develop a vision for where you thought your life was going to go? How many, you know, a lot of us do that, right? We, we kind of have these visions early on about what life is going to be like, what we're going to do, how, you know, how things are going to turn out for us. I had this vision when I was younger that I was never going to grow old. Now, I didn't mean I wasn't going to age. I knew I would do that. I hoped I would do that. You know, that's one of those things you want to do. But I, what I meant was I didn't think I was ever going to have any of those problems that come with aging, like, you know, the aches and the pains and all those kind of things, right? But one day, I noticed that my sweet wife seemed to be having trouble hearing. You know, and Margaret, sometimes if I wasn't looking right at her when I asked her a question, I noticed that she didn't answer so I got concerned about it. One day I walked in the kitchen and I stopped in the doorway because she was standing at the counter with her back to me. And I knew she didn't know I was there. So I stopped in the doorway and I said, sweetheart, no response. A couple more steps. Sweetheart, still nothing. Walked up pretty close behind her now and I said, sweetheart. She turned around and looked at me in that very loving and patient way she has and said, for the third time, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I soon went out and got a hearing aid and took care of that. You know, you know, it was amazing to me. Cynthia, I could not believe how much my hearing aid helped her hearing. Because now I noticed when I asked her a question, it didn't matter whether I was looking at her or not, she still answered, which was, I thought, pretty cool. But, you know, that, that vision obviously didn't turn out real well for me, did it? And I think a lot of times the visions we have for our life, where we're going to go, what we're going to do, maybe don't turn out real well. But Rotary International also has a vision, and I think it's going to probably turn out pretty well. Rotary last year, 2018, introduced a brand new vision statement. I've asked all the club presidents and all the assistant governors to memorize the vision statement so they can use it at their rotary meetings and, and help you all memorize it as well. So, uh, Louisa, you, uh, okay. <laughs> That's kind of the response I've gotten. Now, this is my 44th club visit. That's the same response I've gotten in all 44. So, it's, uh, so obviously, I, my asking you haven't worked real well yet, but we're going to get on that. Rotary's new vision statement says, and this is, this is a, an awesome vision statement. Please, please hear it. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Does that not say what Rotary is better than anything you've ever heard in one sentence? Does it not say who we are as Rotarians better than anything you've ever heard in one sentence? It is absolutely powerful. And we can use that vision statement in all kinds of different ways. We can use it as an elevator speech. Somebody says, tell me about Rotary. Well, 
You know, obviously I wouldn't want to go back and repeat it verbatim. That might sound a little bit canned. But what I might do if I know it real well and have it committed to memory is I might say, well, you know, the best way I can describe Rotary to you is to explain that it, it's an organization of over 1.2 million people around the world who believe that if we come together and take meaningful action, that we can create some positive, lasting change in the world. We see it doing happening in our communities. And you know what? When we do that, it changes us too. We feel it. Would you like to come find out more about it? Who can say no? Who can say no to that? It's a great way to get people to invite them in the room. So we also know that we're changing lives, and when we do that, we're making significant impact, and it may be one person at a time. I want you to think back on your life, and this, okay, I go to the Presbyterian Church, right? They call us the frozen chosen, so not a whole lot of hand raising going on there. But we're going to have a little hand raising church here right now, okay? How many of you can look back on your life and remember someone outside of your family who had a positive, lasting impact on your life? Show of hands. How many of you can do that? Look at that. Look at that. Almost everybody. Almost everybody. Now, of those folks, how many of them knew either then or later of the impact they had on your life? How many? Show of hands. Yeah, maybe maybe a third of those that put up their hands. And <laughs> so the people that didn't know what they did for you didn't stop them from doing it, did it? You suspect maybe they kind of maybe knew that they would never know the outcome? I had a 10th grade geometry teacher named Miss Lawson, Spartanburg High School. Absolutely changed the course of my life. Had it not been for Miss Lawson, there's no way I would have gotten into Clemson. There's no way I'd be standing here before you today. She changed my life. We have people that changed our lives. We are changing other people's lives in the same way. If we will never know them, they'll never know us. But it doesn't stop us from doing it as Rotarians, does it? Why? Why? Because it's the right thing to do. We do things because it's the right thing to do. And that's why people have made an impact on our life. They did it. Not for the accolades or the pat on the back, but because it was the right thing to do. Another question for you. Now, just think about this for a minute. Why did you join Rotary? Why did you join Rotary? Most of the time we hear one of the top, there, the top three answers when we do the survey. I joined for fellowship. I joined maybe for networking opportunities. Or I joined because I wanted an opportunity to serve the community. Those are the top three reasons people give. There are some others, but those are the top three. Maybe one of those was the reason you joined Rotary. Now here, show of hands. How many of you are still in Rotary for the same reason you joined? Show of hands. Wow, that's a good many. That's great. See, I, I was asked to go to my very first Rotary meeting in 2007 by a customer. Now I didn't know what Rotary was, but I didn't know I wanted him to be a better customer. <laughs> you know? So, so I went to the meeting with him. I walked in the room and I looked around. I knew half the people there. At least half. How? There were people I'd gone to church with for years. I wondered why they never invited me to a Rotary meeting. And then I realized maybe I didn't want to know the answer to that. <laughs> But, but there I was, you know, and, I was, and I, I was having a good time. I stayed in the club for, you know, been there for almost a year, I guess. And, and one day, this uh, this fellow in the Rotary Club named Jim Derrick asked me to go with him to a district training event. And I said, well, okay, I've been hanging around here for almost a year. I guess I probably better learn a little bit more about this organization. So I went with him. I walked into the doors of Seacoast Church down in Mount Pleasant that morning as a member of Rotary. I walked out the doors of Seacoast Church that afternoon as a Rotarian. And there's a difference. And I know a lot of you have gone through that same kind of transition. What I learned there was pivotal for me that day. I found out about the polio eradication effort that Rotary was doing. I found out about the clean water project that people brought, you know, providing water to people, clean water to people who never had it before. I learned about how Rotary was teaching.
teaching children how to read and providing meals for people over the weekend, students who wouldn't have them otherwise, and giving warm coats to children who wouldn't have them for the winter. All these things that Rhoda was doing. I'm part of that organization. This is great. This is great. So I went back to the club. I studied the four-way test and the motto. I figured if I'm going to be in the club, I better make sure I can do those things. If I'm going to hang around a while, decided I could and got involved, more involved, in the, in the fundraisers and the service projects. I've already done a little bit of that, but, but now I started to look at it a, a, a lot differently and, and, and realize what we were doing. And I think that most of you have probably been in that same kind of situation, haven't you? What I learned from doing that was that I got a lot of joy and fulfillment. I got a lot of, I got, I got as much out of it as I was putting into it, maybe more. And folks, that's what we need to be sharing about Rotary. That's what we need to be sharing first about Rotary. So that when, when, when we tell somebody about it, let's tell them what it means to us. Tell them about the joy and the fulfillment you get from Rotary first before you tell them about you know, the great food at the meetings and the meetings and the great speakers, except for today, of course. But, the, you know, all the other, you know, tell them about what it means to you. There's a guy over across the river over in Casey, West Columbia. Some of you may know Carol McGee. Anybody know Carol? Yeah. Carol McGee is a great, he has probably sponsored more members in the Casey, West Columbia Rotary Club than they currently have. And the reason is because when he's standing in line anywhere, at the bank, at the fast food restaurant, at the restroom, it doesn't matter. If he's standing in line, he's going to tell the person in front of him and the person behind him about Rotary and what it means to him. And he's going to invite them to come to Rotary. I mean, he is just out there doing it. But we need to be doing that too. We need to be telling people about it. There I was. You know, I've been hanging around with these guys in church for help. You know how long? And I never heard about Rotary. They, you know, if somebody had told me earlier, maybe I'd have gotten an earlier start. We need to be telling people. And we need to be telling them why. Because membership, membership is Rotary's number one, number one internal priority. Our number one external priority, of course, is polio, ending polio. And we're going to get there. But the number one internal priority is membership. Why? Is it about the numbers? No, I don't believe it's about the numbers. I mean, Obviously, that's the only way we have to measure. <laughs> I don't know how else we can measure, but we have to measure membership by the numbers. But to me, it's not about that only. It's about the impact that more members can make. Because when we have more members in our clubs, we have more hands to do the work. We have more ideas for work to do. We have more energy. We have more enthusiasm. We have more innovation. We have more inspiration. We have more fellowship. See, when we, when we get membership right, everything else takes care of itself, doesn't it? It all takes care of itself. We just have to get membership right. Now, I didn't say more money, but don't worry, we'll get to that. Now, and the other part about it is, is this. We never know who that person that we ask to come to Rotary might turn out to be someday. I know a lot of you know the name Roger Ackerman, right? Roger Ackerman started the Cart Fund. Little old Rotary Club of Sumter, South Carolina. Do you think anybody had any idea he was going to come up with that idea when they invited him to come join Rotary? No. He brought a little wooden box in there, started collecting coins, hoping that someday they would have enough money to maybe fund a little bit of research for Alzheimer's disease. That has now spread to 27 districts mostly across the southeast. And this past May, right here in Columbia, at the Cart Fund Board meeting, we gave five research grants to people who are on the cutting edge of finding, either finding a cure for Alzheimer's disease or maybe finding something that will slow it down so we'll die of something else first. One million dollars. One million dollars. Last year, they only gave 700, only $750,000, okay? But over the years, the CART Fund's given millions of dollars for research in Alzheimer's disease. Who knew? How about Arch Clump? Started the Rotary Foundation with a donation from the Atlanta Rotary Club of $26.50. Last year, in this district, 
In this district last year, we gave almost $1.4 million from $26.50 total to $1.4 million just in this district. There are 525 districts around the world. Now, I have to tell you that a large chunk of that $1.4 million came from uh, a gentleman in the uh, Buford Rotary Club who uh, left it to us on his death. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see us get to $1.4 million again this year, but not like that. Not like that. We don't want to lose another guy. He was a great, great guy. The other thing about Rotary clubs is that we must look like the communities in which we're based. We must. We need more women in Rotary. Because guys, if you want to get something done, Ed, what do you do? Ask a woman, right? You know? We have to do that. The other thing is we have to make, we, we, we absolutely must do a better job of um, racial diversity and religious diversity and age diversity. Right, Cynthia? Yeah. We need more young people in Rotary. I mean, obviously, you guys have Cynthia you can call off if you need help with your computer. <laughs> a few other folks, too. But, uh, but you know, we, we, we just have to do it. It's where we have to go. I told you I was going to get to the money part, right? When you go to governor's school, they said when you go to, member, go to the clubs, you have to talk about membership, foundation, and public image. Okay, public image? You got somebody right here who can help you with that and is doing a great job with that in your club already. You're getting the word out. Get the word out. Let people know what Rotary's doing so that we can attract more members into the clubs. We talked about found uh, membership, but foundation, you all know that foundation is our charity. It's Rotary's charity. It's where we give the money to do the work we do. But again, to me, it's not so much about the dollars, the number of dollars, although that's, again, how we measure it, and that's important. But what's more important is what those dollars let us do. What can we do when we have more money to do the work? How much more can we accomplish? What else can be done around the world to make a positive, lasting change in somebody's life? We, we, we just, we have to give, and I, and I appreciate the fact that your club does a great job of that. We're, I hope you'll keep it up. We have a few challenges before us this year. One of those challenges is to pack a million meals. We've been asked to pack a million meals above and beyond what we're doing with backpack buddies and food banks and things of that nature. But to, to come together, and we've got a couple organizations we're working with on that. Uh, you, you guys heard a few weeks ago from a fellow with the outreach program. Uh, we're also working with an organization called Rise Against Hunger. Rise Against Hunger right now is providing meals to the Bahamas. They are sending hundreds of thousands of meals to the Bahamas. You think they need it? Yeah, they do, don't they? And then we need to send more. So we're asking, we've been asked to help. We're going to pack a lot of meals for them this year, we hope. Rise Against Hunger most of the time sends their meals into communities across the world that are the most at risk for, for hunger. But they don't send them to the food banks or the communities there. You know where they send them? They send them to the schools. And they send them to the schools because the children in those communities who are hungry will come to school to eat, but they'll stay and learn. So we're helping twofold. We're helping to attack the hunger issue, and we're also helping to attack the basic education and literacy problems in those countries. Huge, huge problem, huge effort. And literacy is an issue. I've been telling people around the district that, up until about two or three days ago that uh, we had six counties in the state of South Carolina that are so far below the national average in literacy they're considered to be at-risk counties. I've since learned that the number's actually higher than that. We have, we have actually seven counties in our district that are at-risk counties based on the criteria they look at for, for uh, literacy. We've got to do something about that. We need to raise uh, more awareness. We need to advocate for better programs and better funding. And we need to maybe raise some money to support some literacy uh, programs. And we can do that. And then, of course, we are 
continuing to fight polio. That's the other challenge we have that we have to continue to fight. And you'll notice over here, right, sitting right beside my friend Jim Hudson over there, we have the uh, polio, in polio banner. And that is my traveling in polio banner. It's just got all those signatures on it right there. Hey, Ann Walker, how are you? So what I want to ask you to do before you leave here today is to sign that banner in support of ending polio. Would you please do, would you do that for me? There's a catch. Ah, uh, you knew that was coming, didn't you? Mason, what do you think? I signed it during the training. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> minimum, and I, I say minimum because if you want to put, it's like uh, Eric said earlier, any denomination will work. But if a minimum $5 contribution, there's a cart bucket right in front of you, you can just drop your money in there, there's a black pen to sign the light colored spaces and a silver pen to sign the dark colored spaces. But please sign that before you leave and drop your $5 into the bucket. Now, I was at Main Street Columbia Club a few weeks ago. Average age there is about 39. When I said that, they looked at each other and kind of all wide-eyed. They don't carry cash. <laughs> Young people don't carry cash. You know? Well, that's okay. We, we take Venmo. So, so, and for those of you who don't know what Venmo is, we didn't either until our children told us about it. It's a way you can pay with your cell phone, okay? So we'll let you do that. Um, What's the account? I've got it. You can scan my code when I'll show it to you. <laughs> All right, here. We, we also are going to do some of this at district conference. We have an all-club conference coming up in March here in Columbia. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to, we're going to tackle some of these issues there. On Friday, when you come in, you sign in, you're going to have a nice lunch. Keynote speaker is going to be the guy, uh, Ray Buchanan, founder of Rise Against Hunger. And uh, he's going to be our keynote speaker. We're going to take a break right after that. And uh, I know that many of you are looking forward to coming back that afternoon and sitting and listening to speakers tell us about all the things going on around the world, right? Well, I'm sorry I'm going to disappoint you. We're not going to do that. We're going to have a service opportunity that afternoon. After we break from lunch, we're going to come back and pack 100,000 meals that afternoon. It's going to take 300, 350 of us to do that in about two and a half to three hours. So if you can't come for the whole conference, please plan to come and join us for lunch that Friday and stay. Uh, can you make that your meeting that week? March 27th through 29th. You've got a little refrigerator magnet right there on the table that has the, the date on it, that kind of thing. By the way, you see, you like that? I can see myself at All Club Conference 2020. Get it? 2020, see myself? That pretty cool. I like it. So, it's clearly going to be a great conference. Uh, okay. okay, enough of that. So, but but we're gonna we're gonna pack that hundred thousand. We have a band coming in that night called Fantasy There. Awesome. You're going to love them, the dance man. We're going to party Friday night. Saturday morning, we're going to do something for literacy. I want you to bring some children's books. And we're going to march from the convention center up to the state house. And I want you to bring some uh, children's books, carry those with you, so carry some signs, bring some signs that say Rotary Supports Literacy or something of that nature. And if, when you sign up, when you, when you register on Friday before lunch, if you, will, if you will tell them you're going to march on, on Saturday morning, you're going to get a ticket, get a little ticket. How many other Chick-fil-A junkies do we have here besides me? Yeah, quite a few, right? So bring that ticket with you on Saturday morning. We're going to give you a Chick-fil-A breakfast. Am I trying to bribe you? Absolutely. And I'm ashamed of it. We're going to have a lot of people marching with us. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. We're going to come back. And we, have some, we do have some great speakers that day. We have a guy who has a story about polio that you need to bring your Kleenex because it is, it is absolutely one of the most powerful stories on polio I've ever heard. And we're going to have some, uh, some other great speakers that morning as well. That afternoon, we're going to have another opportunity for service. We want to build some little free libraries there that can go back out into some of these communities that are so at risk for literacy. And now, Susan, I don't know what it is, but every time I ask this question, you know, how many of you are familiar with a couple of guys that one place in Kiana, one place in Cello, and 
make all these recordings and music called the piano guys. How many? A few? Several of you? Aren't they, aren't they great? Aren't they great? They're great entertainers. Y'all agree with the people that sing? Well, they're not going to be with us. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we do have a duo coming out of Greenville that are absolutely phenomenal musicians. This guy plays a guitar and the lady plays a cello and they do the same kinds of things with music. That's going to be a little entertainment for Saturday. So it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little different. Your refrigerator magnets. And you look at your refrigerator magnet down near the bottom. I've taken the first phrase from the vision statement and put it in there. You see that in quotes? Together, we see a world where, and then there are three dots. Andrew, you got it? Everybody? All right, here's what I want you to do for a minute. Think about for yourself, for yourself, what would you put in place of those three dots? Together, we see a world where everyone has access to clean water. Together, we see a world where polio is a thing of the past. Together, we see a world where every child has enough food Every, every day, every weekend. Together we see a world where no child goes through the winter without a warm coat. What is it for you? Louisa, what is it for the club? Maybe, maybe you all want to look at that, and get the board together and get the club, and, and think about what you would see as a club for those three dots. What would you put in there? Together we see a world where, whatever. Now. Think about what you can do as a Rotarian to make that come true, to drive it towards it coming true. What can you do that will make the change that you see? That's your vision. Together we see a world where, whatever. And if you'll do that, think about that, you'll be participating with Rotary's vision statement. Because together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. There are 1.2 million plus of us around the world sharing that vision statement. Knowing that, Knowing that and understanding how powerful it is, isn't it true that Rotary connects the world? Thank you all for what you do for Rotary. Thank you for what you do in this community. And thank you so much for listening to me ramble a little bit today. I really appreciate your time and appreciate your attention. Thank you so much. Louisa tells me we have time for questions if anybody has any questions. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, I just want to thank you for what you do for Robert. I've been watching you for a long time, and you're amazing. I really appreciate all the things you have done. We thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Ability to get things done. 
I think what it's done is it's improved our ability to get things done because we're getting ideas. You know, a lot of times the business leaders, Elliot, you know, the, the folks who own companies, that kind of thing, for the most part, particularly in the past, have been folks who were, uh, uh, let's say, a little more experienced, a um, little, little older. But when we have when we have started to bring in uh, folks that uh, uh, of all ages and, and all uh, walks of life, I think it's given us a, a far greater expanse of ideas. We're doing we're doing more things now that we would have never thought about doing 20 years ago, and we have more energy, and I think, in fact, to do that. Um, you know, a lot of times we we've seen some of the I'm quite honestly we see a lot of the, the folks who are my age. Or older that are hesitant to get out and put their hands to the wheel. But the younger folks are really anxious to get out and do that. And I think getting more younger people in does allow us to do more uh, than what we've been able to do in the past. So I, I'm excited about where we are. I, we, we just, we need to, we need to just spread, we need to, we need to be spreading the joy of what we do. And we need to be doing that across all ages, all races, all we, we need better racial diversity in almost every club in our district. There are very few, because everybody comes in with a different set of, um, of ideas, different, different perspective because of where they have come from in their life. And when they bring that into the club and we get the breadth of, of the, the knowledge and the breadth of the ideas and, and the things that we can, that we can accomplish, there are things I think we haven't even thought of yet that we need to be working on because we don't have the, the right folks in the club to, to help us move in that direction. Yes, sir. Does the Paul Harris membership go into the Rotary Foundation or is it separate sometimes? Paul Harris and the Paul Harris member. Is that into the foundation or is it a separate foundation? No, the Paul, Har Paul Harris is a Paul Harris Fellowships and Paul Harris Society that kind of thing. Those are those are just uh, those are just different um, recognitions or contributions to the foundation. Those are those are recon, uh, you know, It's just those are just recognitions. It's it's not a matter of having a different place it goes. Uh, anything like that. Now there are three ways you can give into the foundation, and I know most of you probably know this, but you can give to the annual fund. The annual fund is the money that we that, that we're putting to work right now, and uh, half of that comes back to the district in three years. Uh, and I know a lot of people say, what happens to the other half? Well, the other half is used to match global grants and to match uh, uh, global scholars and those kind of things. But half that comes back, we're able to use for district grants, we're able to use for uh, some of our global scholars that we, we, we do have and, and the Fountain World Fund does have. Um, and we're able to support polio with it. So there are a lot of things that, we, that, that, that happen from that. That's the annual fund. The, the next is the endowment fund. And the endowment fund is money that goes in, it's, it's accumulated, and it earns interest. And the interest from that endowment fund, based on the contributions from a particular district, come back to the district as well each year as part of our district designated fund. So we get um, interest our share of the interest from the endowment fund every year that we can then use as part of our uh, district grants. And then, of course, there's polio, the polio effort, and uh, uh, we want people to contribute to the polio effort as well. So please, again, don't forget to sign, <laughs> the, I'm gonna put in another plug, don't forget to sign the end polio banner before you leave. And uh, if you need to sign over somebody else's name, if you can find mine right on top of it, that's fine. That'd be okay, just write over, and we've had a, one person already to sign on the back of it. So we'd love to have that thing covered up by the time uh, the, the year's over. There is a record, by the way, of, uh, what was it? How much was it? 100? I don't remember. It was a record of almost $200, I think, we, that one club did, contributed as, and by the way, we are right at $3,000 uh, for the year for people signing the banner. That means $9,000 to polio by the time you add the gates match. So, so please do that. Other questions? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Hey, Hal. Uh, Johnny, I watched the um, Netflix series on Bill Gates. It's excellent. And I 
and they were talking about what they've been doing as far as targeting. Yeah. Do you have some extra information that's no. not in that? Or? No, I, I, the only thing I know, I don't think he mentioned Rotary, did he? No, he didn't. Yeah. And he, I, he showed partners, yeah. so it was not, he yeah. did not mention Rotary a lot. That's yeah. Good. You I, got a little plug if you were looking for it. Yeah, it was a little bit of a plug. Well, that was a little bit disappointing, but uh, you know, it, yeah, I mean, they're just doing, they're doing great things, but I, I really don't have any more than, than what you saw there. In fact, that was, I learned some, from that, so that's, anything, anybody else have any, any questions? Thank you all. You, you guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Johnny. You are an inspiration to all of us, and we appreciate what you're doing for Rotary and especially what you're doing for us. So in honor and appreciation for your time with us today, we have made a $100 contribution to the CARP Fund in your name. So thank you so much. And now, next week, Mason. Y'all, Cynthia's been doing a great job of putting up the programs for what's coming up. Plus, she's been putting it in our newsletter that she's so able and wonderful about. Next week we have Matt, Max Metcalf from BMW. He's not bringing free samples. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the Salvation Army Project fight that we want to learn about. Then we've got City Council Candidate Forum for the open citywide, the all city um, actual ballot, currently held by uh, Howard Duvall, but the other candidates are coming as well. That's going to be on the 28th of October. Then on November 4th, we've got Carl Blackstone with the Columbia Chamber of Commerce. So we've got some great programs coming up. Please invite some friends to come. Good. Thank you, Mason. And now, uh, we have lost our songbirds. And I know you don't want to hear me sing. So could we just stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Great week.